Good evening, Winnebago membership, Winnebago community, and Winnebago workforce. This is the weekly COVID-19 update for the Winnebago tribe of Nebraska. And uh, this week, I wanted to acknowledge some good news. You know, this I, this morning, I thought about uh, this whole year and uh, all the things that have been has been thrown at us and all the, uh, the hardships and all the never happened before us and how we, we've done well, you know, that, that we're real fortunate that we have good people and we're smart people. And uh, so I was really proud of that. And I, I was thinking about that this morning and, uh, with the news coming yesterday that our community has reached zero active cases um, this is the first time. This is the first time since we got So, you know, it's a little special, and I wanted to acknowledge that. And uh, us as a group wanted to acknowledge that. And we wanted to, we wanted to talk to the creator. Uh, as little creators, people we had that real close relationship with our creator. So we wanted to, uh, we wanted to say a few words. Um, on behalf of the people and acknowledge that and, uh, whatever, whatever is in store for us coming up that uh that the creator can watch over for watch over us and that all his helpers can help us and, and and that we can make it through and that we're real fortunate to be where we're at today so we we called upon uh mr isaac smith for, former councilman a spiritual leader for the winnebago people to take care of that for us uh, how he does how he has taken care of that for for so many of our relatives and for our people during these special times. So with that, um, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Isaac Smith. Thank you. I'd like to uh, start off by saying uh, thank you to each one of you for uh, tuning in. And then uh, uh, thank you to the council for uh, bringing me tobacco and asking me to uh, offer a word of prayer. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to uh, pray for the relatives and uh, always try to do that. And then uh, it's my first time can actually praying on video or anything like that but uh and offer a word of prayer on thanks for everything that we have here today in our little village so i said you could have bear along with me oh mona chung to come to you at this time mona say pina gigi to you when you can up to you for this day here mona and uh mona chung to ask that you could have looked down upon each and every one of our relatives wherever they are in the world today i said you could have blessed them that you could keep this virus away from them. Then uh, Mono Chunga in our uh, little village in Winnebago, Nebraska, uh, we haven't had this uh, virus for uh, uh, going on two days now. Any new cases, I asked Mono Chunga that you could continue to keep it that way here amongst the Winnebago people in Winnebago, Nebraska. And uh, Mono Chunga asked that you could continue to uh, watch over our uh, uh, whole chunk nation in Wisconsin, bless them, watch over them, whatever they, it is, their wants, needs, and worries are, I asked that you could take care of them for them. And uh, Mono Chunga asked that you could bless all of our uh, children that are in these schools that are going to be going back to school and the ones that have gone back to school. Mm -hmm. Mono, there sure is a lot of uh, parents and uh, grandparents that are worried about uh, this virus going around and becoming uh, into their homes, into their families, and uh, taking one of their loved ones. Mm -hmm. Mono Chunga asked that you could keep it away from us so that we could continue on here enjoying life happy and healthy and a long life here on creation. And uh, Mono Chunga asked that you could continue to bless all of our elders, all of our mourners. All of the ones that uh, uh, continue to uh, say a prayer to you, Mona, I say, could uh, strengthen our relationship with you. And uh, Mona, Chunga, I say, Pinagigi to you, Wanaganapsana to you, for all the two legged, all the four legged, all the winged ones, all the ones that swim underwater and the ones that grow in their creation. And uh, Mona, I say, you could uh, watch over all the relatives that are uh, continuing to help out the Winnebago tribe in Nebraska, Mona. I uh, said so you could watch over them so that they could have safe travels and that they could uh, bring good things to our community. And I'm Mono Chunga to ask that you could continue to watch over our uh, little ones that uh, mm -hmm. go around our village, Mona. I so said you could keep them safe, Mona. Today, there sure is a lot of traffic through our little village, Mona. I so said you could keep them safe. And I'm Mono Chunga to ask that you could bless all the ones that uh, don't know how to pray, that don't have a relationship with you, Mona. I so said you could bless them in a good way. Continue to watch over them. And I'm Mono Chunga to ask if there's anything I have said in this word of prayer that I uh, that you, you could overlook me for it, that uh, uh, isn't appeasing to you. And then I'm Mono Chunga to ask that if there's anything that I have left out in this word of prayer, ask Mono that you could take care of it for us today. Oh, his shit, Jay. Oh, oh, th thank you, Isaac. Um, real special words and uh, powerful, and uh, that that's the way you are, and that's the way you live your life, and. Uh, you know, never pass up an opportunity 
uh, to help somebody. You know, if somebody asks you, you're there. And that's a, that's a good way to live, a way that we always try to be. And that's good medicine for you and your family and, and for our people. And that, that, oh. on, you know, that ripples that ripples through our, our people. So I wanted to thank you. And, uh, and with that, pass along to uh, this, today's updates, uh, Mona Zavante. Good afternoon, Winnebago community. Um, I just want to thank Isaac for the prayer and John for those good words. Um, no active cases for after four months. That's a great accomplishment for our people. Um, but it's a direct reflection on the hard work that all of our people have been taking time to do. I want to just express um, my appreciation to everyone that has been helping to fight the virus, whether that is community members wearing your mask to the front line, checking on people, providing supplies so people can stay inside. It doesn't mean that we drop our guard. So it's still imperative that we continue to wear our masks as we watch all the other cases that are rising um, around us. And so we need to continue to be vigilant, doing our part to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe. So I just want to say that much and then start our presentation. All right, the current status, um, total tested in Nebraska has been 345,243. Uh, total negatives have been 312,412. Um, total positives have been 32,348, and there have been 383 deaths. Within Winnebago, we have tested uh, 675. 575 of those have been negative, 100 positives, 97 are recovered, and three deaths. Um, for our non-Winnebago, but have tested at 12 Clans Unity Hospital, there have been 586 tested, 492 negatives, 94 positives. So some of the, the updates, uh, we did put the events form um, on our website. So um, any event that's occurring within Winnebago, we'd like uh, for you to fill that out and send it directly to um, the Winnebago Health Department and myself so that we can make sure that all the precautions are being taken are appropriate. I also wanted to remind people that quarantine uh, for household members starts 14 days after um, that last contact with a positive is when we release you. And so that's just um, some information. Some of the program updates, um, we have shawl making that's on Friday, September 11th and 18th, and you can contact Tisha. Uh, Marcy is going to have a book giveaway at WIC on September 1st and the 2nd. Uh, we will be starting up walking wellness with very limited participation. So you'll be contacting Pilar and Rob for those details. We also have two surveys that are out. One is um, input from our juniors, seniors, um, and our sophomores as well for an internship program that we'd like to start at the health department. And we're also looking at getting some input regarding um, redesigning our health promotions and activities program. Starting September 8th, we will be starting our shuttle services up again. Um, the new location will be at the Urban Indian Center on Geneva Street. Um, and Whirling Thunder will also be starting their extended hours uh, for the workout rooms. So look for posters. Uh, we'll be getting those out shortly. And then I will turn it over to Laura Gamble, our Chief Operating Officer for 12 Clans Unity Hospital and some hospital um, updates. Real quick, Mona, I want to mention uh, before we turn it over to Laura that that form, the events form, can be found at winnebagopublichealth.com slash COVID. It's in the right-hand side in the bar. You just click the title and the form should uh, download right to your computer. All right. Thank you, Mona. A uh, couple new updates at 12 Clans. Uh, we found out last week that um, the obstetric service or OB services that's delivering babies at Mercy One Siouxland will be discontinuing uh, as of September 1st. So Mercy One Siouxland uh, or uh, Mercy in Sioux City will not be delivering babies after September 1st, 2020. Patients in Sioux City presenting directly to a hospital for labor and delivery care should uh, directly ac access Unity Point Health or St. Luke's uh, at 2720 Stone uh, Park Boulevard in Sioux City. 
Uh, the phone number is 712-279-3500. So we want to make sure that people understand that it, it, if you have need to deliver uh, to go to St. Luke's. Uh, we wanted to also go over what we offer at 12 Clans Unity Hospital for obstetrics or OB or prenatal care. Uh, we continue to offer the pap smears, the sexually transmitted infection testing, pelvic exams, ultrasounds, and blood work. We do not deliver babies at 12 Clans Unity Hospital. Our ER should be utilized by pregnant patients only in critical uh, situations, and mothers and babies will be transferred to St. Luke's. We are we were trained. We can we can do it in an emergency situation, but really it's best for you to get somewhere where they have all the staff and the equipment for the delivery. Uh, for prenatal care, patients will continue to be followed by their primary care physician up to 20, 28 weeks gestation or 28 weeks into their pre pregnancy. After that, we utilize providers from Siouxland Medical Education Foundation or SMEF. We do um, many times patients with high risk pregnancies, such as diabetes or hypertension, will um, even uh, have them see uh, the SMEF providers sooner. So there's been a lot of talk out there about the testing updates late lately, and the CDC put um, a few new guidelines on there Monday. Uh, previously, the CDC said viral testing was recommended for people with recent or suspected exposure, even if they showed no symptoms. The guidelines now say some people without symptoms may not need to be tested, even if they've been in close contact with someone known to have the virus. This doesn't mean individuals cannot get tested, but rather that you do, do not have to be tested. Our um, goal at 12 Clans Unity Hospital has been to always increase the testing. And we've offered uh, testing to um, you know, try to increase, get as many people in to test as possible. We have not changed that view. So currently we uh, testing supplies are adequate to perform widespread testing, including testing for patients or people in the community that don't show any symptoms or what we call asymptomatic patients. We have just added that in addition to any eligible Native American, we will begin providing testing to all residents of Winnebago and individuals who work in Winnebago and meet testing criteria. We just feel that is important. I think it's where we've, how we've gotten to where we are today. And um, we do it pretty well right now and, it, and it's easy for us to do. So we're gonna continue the way we are. And that's all I have today. So um, have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Laura, for that uh, update at this time. Um, just real quick uh, update from the, the CEO. Um, we do our, we're finished with the Chromebook laptops. Uh, today was the distribution from 4.30 to 6.30. And uh, we appreciate uh, all the work from IT as well as uh, the procurement office and inventory. And uh, if you guys have any questions as far as uh, technical issues or anything like that, feel free to give the IT a call and uh, hopefully they can help you. Uh, maybe some of our elders need help um, setting that up and I believe once you log in, you're gonna, they're gonna require like a Gmail address. So that's something that um, we're here to help for and then hopefully uh, in the, as the school gets on that uh, those laptops will come in use for um, the live stream updates and just uh, for research of, about COVID in general. And so we appreciate everybody's help and uh, we thank everybody for um, assistance in that uh, community laptop distribution. At this time, we're gonna turn our attention on over to the Winnebago Public School, uh, the superintendent, Mr. Dan Ferringer, for the weekly update. Good afternoon, everyone. Some updates as far as the in-person uh, school starting on uh, September 8th, Tuesday. We're going to be having an open house for K-6 students who will be attending the school in person. The schedule will be as follows so that we can be safe and have small groups. On Tuesday, September 1st, will be kindergarten and third grade. Parents can come in at any time from eight to three to meet the teacher and see what, go through the protocol of what's gonna be expected to be safe. Uh, Wednesday, September 2nd will be first and fourth grade. Thursday, September 3rd will be second, fifth and sixth grade. And again, all this information is on our uh, uh, Facebook 
page. The school will have, um, for the high school orientation days, we're going to break it down by grade levels. On Monday, the 31st of August, we'll have 7th and 8th grade in at 2 o'clock. Tuesday, we'll have the 9th grade in at 9 a.m., 10th grade at 11, 11th grade at 1, and 12th grade at 3. Uh, this is so it gives us time. Parents if uh, and students come in. We'll go through the protocols, what's expected, and uh, we'll need to enter the, through the main entrance, get temp checks, hand sanitized, and remember that face masks are required and available if needed. We have plenty of face masks in our building and hand sanitizer, so all that will be there. We'll uh, direct you to the uh, correct location and so we can get all that and so we're ready to go on the 8th. The other uh, information is the packets and the uh, computers will be de delivered or picked up next week also for those that are doing the homebound uh, situation. All fall sports other than varsity football are still going on as planned. Actually, the high school cross country team is up in Harnington Day running. And if you do see uh, the big black coach, we did get our new coach in. It came uh, yesterday, actually. Um, and we will, it's just black right now, but it eventually we'll have our insignia on it uh, as we get it wrapped. Junior high. Uh, cross country football and volleyball will start practice on Monday the 31st. Again, a code of conduct can be picked up the front desk. So another reminder about physicals, and they, they've been coming in. The uh, kindergarten parents have been doing great. Physicals are required for all incoming kindergarten students, incoming seventh grade students, any new student coming from out of state, and any fresh freshman wishing to participate in athletics. Incoming eighth graders, sophomores, juniors, and seniors who participated last year are exempt from needing a physical. Any student who did not participate last year and wishes to participate must have a physical. Um, again, we are about 70% in person right this time and 30% um, home, home uh, virtual. So again, continue to practice safety measures. I do believe it's helped. And we're really trying to make sure that we follow those protocols up here as the teachers have been in this past week. And so we're, we're just keep uh, pushing the safety protocols as, as we go. And we'll do the same thing with the students. We're going to spend a week or so uh, with the students just making sure they understand the Google Classroom, uh, how to get on the virtual school. Uh, just in case we ever have to go totally virtual. So um, hopefully things will go and knock on wood that uh, we don't have some of the things that are going on around us. So again, continue to be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ferringer. Um, we're going to turn our attention to Little Priest Tribal College. Uh, President, the floor is yours. Good evening, uh, uh, Winnebago Tribal, Nebraska. I hope you and your family are doing well and uh, taking uh, uh, all the precautions uh, as per the CDC guidelines. Also, it's a great day for us that there's no new cases. So it's, it's currently we are having zero cases. It makes our day and uh, I ho we hope to work hard to maintain that. So again, thank you Winnebago Comprehensive Health System. Special thanks to the tri uh, Tribal Council leadership and Pandemic Task Force uh, subcommittee, subcommittees for all their hard work. Um, Little Priest Tribal College started our fall 2020 online classes on Monday. We were all anxious as the semester starts um, completely online. We are very happy to share that everything is going smoothly. Students have collected their laptops, their Chromebooks, their textbooks, and uh, faculty and academic affairs is taking a lead to help our students uh, complete these courses successfully. There are too many people to thank at Little Priest uh, right now. And financial aid, business office have done outstanding job going far and beyond to make sure that students get what they want on timely fashion. So if I missed anybody to thank, I wanna thank the entire Little Priest uh, tribal college uh, community for their 
efforts, their hard work to keep our students moving forward. I also want to take this opportunity to uh, inform all the students who are registered that we are here for you. Do not feel just because it's online doesn't mean you're away from us. We are only a phone call away, an email away, or a text message away, or a Facebook post away. So, but please keep in contact with us. If you need something, call our stu uh, student services. If you need any help in financial aid, call our Office of Financial Aid. But do not feel you're alone. We are in this journey together. Please make sure to do your homework. Please make sure to stay abreast with the material. Do not stay behind. Our community needs the student body for the future. And we are here to help you succeed um, at the college. Again, I want to take an, uh, this opportunity to thank all the people, including the people on the screen here who are, who are continuously working, updating the community. Thank you. God bless and take care. Thank you, President. Um, now we're going to turn our attention to Mayan Beltran, General Manager of Buena Vegas. Mayan. Good evening, community. Uh, I'd first like to start off by thanking John for the good words in the beginning and thanking Isaac for the prayer. Uh, from Winnebago Vegas Casino Resort, we uh, got it approved today by the Winnebago Gaming Commission to implement tomorrow our thermal rapid screen plus readers for entrance into all entrances, including the employee entrance in the back. So that's going to take away the, the handheld ther uh, thermal readers, uh, guns. So we're very excited about that. Those are throughout uh, the, the community in different areas. We ordered them from the Pandemic Task Force, and we're implementing ours tomorrow. Uh, so we're very excited. Um, you know, no new cases, no new uh, incidents out at Winter Vegas Casino Resort in quite a while. Uh, I do want to thank the frontline employees throughout, you know, the, the health care system, all throughout the community and the different areas that have to enforce these policies where it's, you know, keep your mask on, you know, the no smoking. You know, we've had plenty of uh, agencies give us awards and, and thank you letters for the no smoking currently in our casino. You know, it, that that's a double-edged sword because people like to smoke when they're gambling. But, uh, you know, it, it's it's a decision that we made in, in the support of the Winnebago Tribal Council uh, and staying with the masks, with staying with no smoking, 18 and over, to protect the, the minors, the community members, the seniors. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, please, uh, you know, don't. Don't give them too much help when they come over and ask you to put your mask on because, again, we're trying to keep everybody safe. Um, you know, nothing more to report from Winter Vegas at this time, so thank you for your time. Thank you, Mayan. At this time, we're going to turn our attention to Sam Burrish with Ho-Chunk Incorporated. Sam. Thank you, Garen, and good evening. Ho-Chunk Inc. has been in Nebraska statewide news this week. As you may know, the company is helping lead a political effort to expand, tax, and regulate casino gaming at licensed horse racetracks in Nebraska. This would help bring sustainable property tax relief to Nebraska through legalized gaming in the state. Ho-Chunk Inc.'s involvement would also bring economic benefits to the tribe. Over 400,000 signatures, more than required, were collected earlier this year to get the initiatives on this November's general election ballot. But earlier this week, the Nebraska Secretary of State denied certification of the ballot initiatives. So the political committee has appealed to the Nebraska Supreme Court. The court has agreed to take the case against the Secretary of State and hear arguments about securing the initiative's place on the November ballot. The hearing is scheduled for Wednesday, September 2nd. You can learn more by visiting Keep the Money in Nebraska on Facebook or visiting the website. On a separate note, we'd like to thank everyone who's helped with Ho-Chunk Farms Indian corn harvest. We posted a new photo gallery and write up on the Ho-Chunk Inc. Facebook page. There's also a great video uh, recently shared on the Winnebago Tribes Facebook page. Um, we also have a fun throwback post from an August 2005 USA Today full page article on the Ho-Chunk Village development. 
Uh, those are the updates I have for this evening. Uh, thank you for your time, and I'll turn things over to Brian Mathers. Thanks, Sam. Um, and good evening, everyone in the community. Um, I don't have a lot today. I am sort of sorry to report that tomorrow, Friday uh, morning, will be the last opportunity we have for the distribution of the USDA Farm to Family produce boxes. Um, so it's your last chance to come and get one of those if you haven't yet, or if you had and you want another one, we'll have 240 of them to give out tomorrow morning down at the farmer's market in Ho-Chunk Village, starting right sharp at eight o'clock. Um, we'll also have some of the supplemental materials from uh, the HCI has been providing. Um, so we'll have uh, another, a lot of stuff to give out, but tomorrow's the last day. So far as we know, we're hoping that um, if there's some additional congressional action, that program could be started up again and extend further into the year. But um, the best we can predict now is that tomorrow will be our last day for that. Um, however, it's not your only opportunity to get free or, or to get fresh produce because the um, farmer's market is still gonna be going for another month or so, um, and that's Wednesday afternoons, one o'clock to six o'clock in the Ho-Chunk Village area, the farmer's market facility. And speaking of that facility, um, if there's groups out there or programs or even just families or something that would like to use that outdoor portion of that farmer's market facility for special event or gatherings or fundraisers, um, that's available for that. Just give us a call at HCCDC and we can get that scheduled uh, for you. There's no charge for it. Um, they've got the fire pit there now. There's there's access to water and the bathrooms. And so it's kind of a nice location where if you need a place to meet, it's open air, so you wouldn't have to be enclosed. You know, it would be easy to be have a socially distanced type of meeting there. Um, if people have needed that facility for a special event or a meeting or something, just let me know. Um, the only other thing I have is I just want to congratulate the community on reaching this milestone of, of working through all of these cases and coming to a point where we don't have any active ones and no new ones. We're almost six months into this response now to this pandemic. That's really pretty incredible. Um, and it's been, you know, this success of reaching this milestone is really the result of the, uh, the teamwork that's gone on here and that's been evidence in the community from day one leadership from the tribe, tribal government, tribal council, uh, going up above and beyond for our healthcare professionals in the community, and just really um, all the community partners across all the different um, service areas just being willing to step up and do their part and, and work collaboratively and in the best interest of everybody. I just think it's been almost a model response for how a community can uh, can address this, you know, this really unique challenge for the community. So congrats on that. Continue to stay safe and let's, it's not over, <laughs> unfortunately, so we have to keep it up, but I, I think we're definitely um, at a good point and on the right track. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate the, the update. At this time, we'll turn it over to Emily with uh, the Winnebago Comprehensive Healthcare System to go into the question and answer session. Emily. Thanks, Garen. Um, as a reminder, you can submit any questions you have um, for the health officials to COVID at WinnebagoTribe.com via email, and we will answer those questions in our next week's community update. Um, you can also message um, any questions you have um, to the Facebook pages or go to our website, winnebagohealth.com. Um, both the health department, the public health department, and Talkland Community Hospital have a contact us form, and you can submit any questions you have via that route as well. We'll go ahead and get started with the first question. Um, the question is, I heard in Emerson over 20 students are positive for COVID. Is it part of Emerson on the reservation? Those Winnebago employees that live there should quarantine, or did the health department clear them? Mona, can you take that question? Sure. Um, yes, Emerson is part of it, is on the reservation. Um, we work very closely with Northeast Nebraska Public Health Department as well as Dakota County and any other um, health department. So anyone that would have been identified as a close contact or a positive, we have been, would have been notified 
regardless of where they're tested, and we would be following up on them. Okay, Mona, thank you for that answer. Um, the next question is, um, will there be an after-school program this year? When can we go back to the gym? Um, all that equipment is in there, and the kids should be able to play basketball. Mona, can you take that one as well? Sure. Um, we are looking at starting the after-school program uh, with a limited amount of children, um, a, starting with walking wellness first, so it would be an outside activity. Uh, we are looking at um, opening the gym um, probably the third week in September with limited amount of people. We're also on September 8th, as indicated earlier, uh, we'll be increasing our hours for the workout rooms. So everything is a process. Um, the health department has laid out, just like we, we closed, um, we're opening up slowly. So that's all in the works and um, and we'll, we'll do our best during these lives to continually to update you guys on the next phase of um, the opening for the health department. Um, and make sure, uh, in addition to that, to like um, the health department's Facebook page too, because I'm sure we'll be posting information um, on that uh, as it comes as well. So thank you, Mona. Um, last question, does the health department recommend the issue, uh, they issue food vouchers instead of the food distributions? Uh, the comment was, I think we're adult enough to buy our own food. Um, I would really have to defer to the um, Esther and the tribe on the parameters for the funding sources um, that supply the food distributions. Um, but I think that any way that the community members are able to receive food would be appropriate. Great, Lona, thank you so much for those answers. And I'll turn it over to Garen. Garen, are we, are there more? Are we gonna do the other questions? Correct. Thank you, Emily, and uh, appreciate, okay. Mona, the responses to those uh, important questions. And for those folks that do have inqu questions, uh, that's the reason for the stream, so we appreciate them. And uh, this one here is going to go to uh, Vice Chairman, and uh, it's regarding the COVID security officers. Uh, John, are the COVID security officers making a difference, or are we just wasting money? So the security subcommittee that I was a part of, that the chief of police was part of, uh, Mayan Beltran was a part of, um, we decided to create uh, 15 jobs, uh, security officer jobs, and, and they've been hired, um, they're working, they're in the community, and they're, they're performing uh, duties that, that feel appropriate by the chief of police who's uh, supervising them. And the way they're utilizing them right now is through the uh, different programs that get visitors. And uh, I think that it's not wasteful. And I think it's really going to be impactful for our, IP, our people. Because the way I think is that the, those are 15 people. And that's uh, 15 homes and 15 families. And uh, for them to have employment, performing a duty that is important during this pandemic, I think is is anything but wasteful. And I think that the, the wages that they're earning, um, that, that they're, they're reaching a home, you know, maybe reaching children, reaching elders, you know, providing food for a, ho a home and paying bills. So I don't think it's anywhere near wasteful. I think it's really uh, a good thing. And, and even some of the, the good people that we got as security officers now, maybe that's all they needed. Maybe that's the opportunity that they needed. And it's going to continue for them, you know, even after this pandemic, you know, that they're going to gain value from this and uh, and go on for, with their working careers. And it's going to be beneficial to them. So I feel really good about the security officer positions. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, this next one here is uh, for vice chairman as well as uh, Mayan. If you want to uh, kind of piggyback off of uh, John's uh, response here, it, it has to do with one of Vegas. Uh, here is the viewer question. How is one of Vegas doing with the response? Question mark. Will we need to prepare for layoffs in the tribal organizations due to loss of revenue? Um, as you know, one of Vegas uh, sends a lot of the appropriations over to the tribe. And so I think it uh, has to relate with that. John. Yes, there's been a lot of planning and um, by the CEO and the CFO and the treasurer 
and we've been well informed and with the task force and there's been really some smart moves put in place and the cares act and the small business grant is all coming into play so moving forward the the tribe is in really a uh, a good condition considering all the facts that's happening that we ha- we've had to close all our businesses that we're we're trying to provide more services so so it's really uh i think it's really a, surprising and, and and really something to be proud of that that we're in a good uh, position financially moving forward into this next year and um so, so I'll, I'll let mine uh continue with the the vegas portion of that but i just wanted to reassure all the tribal members that um that that we're doing fine you know we're doing fine thank you Thank you, John. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and, and to follow up on the security a little bit too, you know, those are, uh, CARES Act money, uh, from the, the government that, that's funding that, uh, security force. So it's not really a cost that the tribe is, is incurring necessarily. It's out of that fund. So, uh, I, I also believe that that's a, a strong commitment to the, to the community there. Now, as far as one of Vegas and, and revenues, now, obviously, uh, it, the revenues aren't the same in the casino industry as a whole. Um, when you when you consider that the hours of operation are, are lower, there are still people that are, are afraid to go out into the public areas, and, and that's why we feel uh, very confident and in, in and comfortable with the procedures that we have in place at the casino. Now, with the, the lower revenues, however, uh, we were able to cover a lot of the costs in the beginning through our PPP loans and some of the CARES Act funding that John just mentioned. So we did get a business grant. Uh, we have been funding some of the, uh, the PPE uh, with that CARES Act money as well. So it looks like those are uh, funds that are being spent through the budget until we're reimbursed for those funds, which is all happening now. Part of that is uh, the, the PPP loans that, uh, we're gonna have forgiven, uh, hasn't happened yet with the forgiveness because we're doing the paperwork now. Once that happens, it puts us in a better position financially, uh, the way it looks on paper. And we'll be, um, given some of that information during our treasurer's report tomorrow to the tribal council to, to share, you know, how the casino revenues are, are being affected. But on top of that, you know, we've done a very strategic um, controlling of costs. So even though the revenue is down a little bit, we've been controlling costs to offset that based on year over year numbers and based on, end, you know, net revenues, you know, the casino isn't really doing so bad. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing a, a great job controlling uh, the, the revenues and the expenses to still have a decent net profit uh, for the tribe and sending over as much as possible. Now, of course, you know, with the pandemic and the opening, the flow opening of businesses and, and the spending, you know, we had to do some different projections of our budget and, and based on what's happening and what's going on around the country. So we've had some great meetings and networking with industry experts throughout the, the country, and uh, we feel we're doing a great job with that. Uh, again, we, we've had vendors and people come through here that work with casinos and, and have seen what we've done and what we're doing currently, and, uh, you know, we get a lot of praise because we're doing above and beyond what most people are doing in this industry. We're, we're really taking care of our, our guests and our team members here in our community. So, uh, and I would like to add, you know, we just got notified. So last year in 2019, Casino Player Magazine is a nationwide magazine uh, that does uh, information on casinos. And last year we won 19 awards in, in the state of Iowa. This year we were just notified we have 23 awards, uh, 10 first place awards, six second place awards, and seven third place awards in the state of Iowa that Winter Vegas has just won. So that was uh, pre-COVID and pre-pandemic. Obviously, this is when they were doing their their stuff, but it shows you uh, the type of business we're running out here for for our, uh, for our tribe. And you know, we're we're making things happen. You know, we're we're a tribal owned casino, and there's 19 commercial casinos and four tribal casinos in the state of 
Iowa, and uh, we're winning top awards throughout the industry. So, you know, we're very out-of-the-box thinkers and forward thinkers, and we know we have to make some adjustments with uh, reopening after a pandemic, and our marketing team is doing a great job with that. So, you know, come back out. We're very we're very safe. We have some great promotions going on, uh, and, and, you know, the revenues have picked up weekly. Um, every week is getting better and better. So uh, we feel that the revenues and things are, are very strong for us right now, and we continue to improve those every week. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Chairman, as well as uh, General Manager Mayan Beltran of Buena Vegas Casino. Uh, last question that we have here today, and uh, we'll direct this uh, to Vice Chairman Snowball. Uh, why did they spend $2 million on a road to the river? Question mark. How is that COVID response? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, there's actually a few projects that involve roads and uh, the the rationale behind the road that everybody's seen that's happening towards the river was that uh, that, that road is in, in very bad shape and uh, parts of it was crumbling and we had uh, concerns for our health officials who because we have homes out there and, uh, you know, uh, damaged tires and uh, bent rims, stuff like that. So so we wanted to try to take care of that road a little bit, make sure that we, there's a, there's safe access to, to our, all of our tribal members. And uh, I also wanted to say that that road uh, has a, a few different parts to it. It's not fully funded by the, the CARES Act. Um, it's it's the the funding that goes all the way down the river is is from somewhere else um that was that was okay to use for that road so so that road's kind of uh there's a few different parts to it and and it was funded in a few different ways and and just a portion of it was funded by the cares act to make sure that we had that good access to tribal members and uh there's there's other roads that are being um worked on and uh developed to for quarantine housing and uh so so I always want to try to uh, give my best um, of what I know and and the rationale that 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 I, was, that I sat in those meetings and the, the task force came up with, and that the the tribal council approved and that I was a part of and um, out to the membership. You know, I, I know a lot of information can be uh, viewed wrong if we don't if we don't communicate that to our people. So whoever asked that question, I wanted to thank you, and uh, and for providing the opportunity to respond to that. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Um, one thing that uh, Communications Department wants to put out there is uh, tomorrow, folks, make sure you mark your calendar. Uh, we have the census coming, and it's a self-response event. Uh, it's going to be held Friday, August 28th from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at 120 South Bluff Street. That's right next door to the fire station. And uh, we do have a special guest that's going to be coming, and that's uh, the Husker legend Johnny the Jet Rogers. He's going to bring the Heisman Trophy. And so if you folks want to grab a picture um, and the health department we checked with them and they are encouraging also I think they're actually requiring that uh, everybody wear a mask and use hand sanitizer and please keep your social distance but if you do have questions about the 2020 census uh, now is the team now is the time to ask because the the 2020 census team will be on site along with Johnny Rogers so we want to make sure that uh, this year uh, for the census that you be counted and uh, it's a great way to show your power uh, right now we are at 33 percent response rate from Winnebago we need to get to hundred percent some of you may have questions on how to do it uh, this will be a great event for you to come over to the uh, self response event so once again Friday August 28th 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. that's tomorrow and uh, we hope to see you folks there all right. With that, we appreciate everybody that uh, is on here today, and uh, we thank everybody, and uh, we hope to continue to report good news with the zero cases. But as always, like the health officials said, keep up those precautions. Wear your mask, uh, wash your hands for 20 seconds or more, and uh, please keep the social distancing um, going. Uh, good job, Winnebago, and uh, thank you guys, and you folks have a good evening. Have a good evening. Thanks.